Hi, 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 Hi. Welcome, Iman. Okay. My really good friend. Uh, Welcome. Iman, uh, I want to give you a secret. When he decided to join this forum, uh, he uh, posted five or six topics and he couldn't even choose which one. <laughs> okay. So he doesn't even mention that. <laughs> He's so knowledgeable, not only on uh, restorative, on implant. I wanted to mention a few things, just so uh, our audience will know. So you graduated, first time I met you, we were doing the postgraduate diploma in San Rafael in uh, Rome. Yes. Uh, in Milan. Yes, that's right. And then yeah, you in Milan, went in Milan. Rome as well. So yes. you started doing implants and then you moved on to laser or was that a passion uh, together? Actually, I started with implants since 2008 in Cambodia, and then I went to Germany in 2016. And then when I met this guy, Dr. Walid, I started to, <laughs> to, to move everywhere. <laughs> Just uh, Victoria to tell you about Iman. Of okay. course, I have invalid testimony about him. <laughs> Just I make some calculation now in my calculator. Iman okay. here attended the laser program fellowship of ILD and Baird, and he finished the professional diploma of cosmetic dentistry. He's mostly finished his master in laser dentistry with the Rome Catholic, and his master of uh, restorative dentistry with Les Bains the Roms, and advanced in implantology. Uh, this is just in less than two years. When I make the calculation, I found that Iman, he attended something around 75 days with Baird in the last two years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually, you know Baird more than... <laughs> I turned silver at the, with the I Emirates. <laughs> yes, actually, he's keeping flying. Sometimes it was very tricky just to think he has course in this weekend with laser next weekend and cosmetic yes, next yes, weekend sir. and laser again or something like this. Sometimes he travels three, four times for one month for the Baird program. I can imagine. Uh, nice to see you, my friend. Yeah. I can nice imagine it must be very hard to travel from Indonesia as well. <coughs> a long distance. Yes, it's, it's true. It's long distance and it's quite tiring. But as, as you know, if you learn more, you, you read realize that don't know a lot of things. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, I'll Hello. tune in your presentation and once we finish, we're going to talk a little bit more and tell us about uh, your journey. Okay? Okay. Can you share your screen Can now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, let's try to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay. Hello, good evening, everyone. At least here in Indonesia, it's uh, 21.30 in the evening. And um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for staying at the beard. Um, as you can see from the previous conversation that I graduated from a lot of professional diploma in Baird. And um, I don't see this Baird courses as a courses. It's more like a family reunion maybe. <laughs> because I often see my friend as I see my mother twice a week. And once every two weeks, sorry. So greetings from Indonesia, from Banten. Um, thank you for this opportunity to meet some friends. And uh, I'm going to share with you, um, this time a little different compared to what I've been presenting this few years, mostly about surgery and implant. Well, it's related with surgery, but this is endosurgery. It's a is an apicoectomy and uh, with a radicular cyst in infection, infection, infected uh, radicular cyst. Okay, this is some pictures. As you can see, you can see Hassan. You can see my fellow Indonesian, there's Fadlan. 
and also Tafik, and you can see Manaf, you can see Walid, you can see Tamir, you can see Abdurrahman, and from the ALD. There's a, there's a lot of faces there, and this is where I started with uh, the first time with Baird. This is the graduation with Baird, and this is after Baird. So, um, I have a lot of friends all over the world thanks to Baird also, because with by joining Baird, I get a chance to know a lot of people, especially in uh, in the Gulf region and in Europe. So I'm going to start my presentation now, and the title is a minimal invasive laser assisted epicoidotomy followed with uh, bone augmentation immediately. And um, in an infected radicrosis in one visit, it's a case report. So before I start my case, I would like to share with you because nowadays there's a lot of transformation in dentistry, definitely. And just like this, you can see the uniform. Actually, I just got here about 15 minutes earlier than my presentation because I have to go to work. And uh, this is me previously, before the COVID, before the pandemic. You can, as you can see, I can still smiling. And this is me recently. So it's useless to smile anyway because no one can see your face. And there are some difficulties by doing this because your eyesight will be interrupted because of the condensation of the fogging of your lens. And hard to breathe, stiflingly hot. <laughs> it's very hot. And not easy to hear someone that talk to you because you are covered with a lot of things and definitely uncomfortable. Okay, so speaking about transformation, there's a transformation definitely in my regular practice because I used to work dentistry, I used to do dentistry, but not anymore because since I know laser, I changed my practice into laser dentistry. Not general dentistry, but laser dentistry, you know. Because there's a lot of things that you may have if you know a lot of things about laser. This is, uh, my presentation is one of the proof that when you know, when you use laser, you have less swelling, less pain, less bleeding, and and then it's, it's, it's very helpful in your daily practice. Well, this is the illustration of a laser meeting. Double off, okay. There's a typo there. As you can see, if uh, all of the laser guy have held a meeting, then that's what you got. <laughs> and they're talking about how to spread the words of laser because it's, it's not easy, definitely not easy. And then, how to convince dentists to use the laser. This, there's another part, another level of difficulties. Because not all of my friends in Beard really believe in laser. Even though, even though they know about laser, but yeah, it's, 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 well, if you don't know things, then you will feel, you, you will have problem with it. But if you know it, then it will be a perfect tools for you in your daily work. So they just say, just follow the light and may the force be with you. This is a very nice picture. And this is when we are laser dentists, when we are ready, this is how we look like. <laughs> okay. Just referring about laser, laser is a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. I think all of you know this. And I borrowed this picture from my, one of my mentor, one of my friends, Giovanni Olivi. I hope you see this. And um, okay, this is, when you know a lot, of laser, a lot of things about laser, then you can do a lot of things. 
So this is one of my study about apicoectomy. And then another thing, you can do flapless crown lengthening with laser. Maybe not all of the case, but there is some points that you can use laser for this. And then also minimally invasive odontoma removal and extrusion of impacted incisor. I, I, I'm doing all of this because when you are attached to a guy like Walid Al Tayeb, he will demand a lot of things from you and better you prepare it before he, he asks for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Walid. <laughs> this is true. Okay. So treating hypersensitivity from abstraction or abrasion in a bulk of area is also giving an amazing result. And this is my thesis is at Pienza University. It's about the IKIT protocol. It's also after uh, placing implant in infection socket and then um, Place, it in, place an implant immediate, immediately, and this is the way to make uh, immediate restoration. And also, this is my thesis in the Universita Católica del Sacro Cuore, a Master in Laser Dentistry. It's a laser assisted immediate implant placement in post infection socket. So, ah, what is radical cysts? I think uh, you can do just uh, screenshot uh, screen and then you can read it later I think you can find it you can google it you can find everything this is um, I'm I'm quoting some words and this is what Hassan loves when I make a presentation and um, well radical is is generally uh, cysts arising from a retail residues okay so I think you all know this um, I may skip this and, and what can cause radical cysts to be infected? Well, carriers in the root canal, root fracture, periodontal pockets, infiltration that can deliver bacteria to the apex. Okay, you can see the link, uh, you can see the recite there. And what is epicoexomy? Epicoexomy is a minor surgical procedure that removes the apex, okay, the edge of the apex. Okay. This is some journal related to epicoectomy. This is an effect on epical seal, affected effect to dentin permeability, connective tissue response to laser treated dentin, and effect on post-surgical pain. That you can screenshot this and then you can read it because the time is very limited here. And effect on crack creation. So if it's been tested that Oh, it's, uh, the, the last crack is, uh, can be caused by uh, laser. I mean, ultrasonic um, confessional burr give you more cracks than laser. Effect, effect on root and morphology, effect on treatment outcome, safety of laser and epicoectomy. This is very safe procedure. If you, if you know the laser, if you know the laser physics, if you... If you know a lot of things about laser, it's completely safe. Okay, so I'm going to start now with the first case. Uh, the patient is 20 years old female. She's, I think, uh, I cannot imagine her face when she first came to my office. It's like, I don't know, like a balloon on the, on, the, on the left side, on the left side of the face. And she suffered a lot of pain to the case. And this is the case uh, which came. It's, uh, it was a fracture from a blunt trauma five years ago. And, um, but overall, the final condition is normal. And uh, anyway, she came three days prior. Uh, she, she felt swelling three days prior. And then uh, she felt the move on the and the sound is crepitous when she, she touch uh, the buccal side of the tooth, of the, of, the, of the gum. And then the clinical examination of tooth 22 is a second degree mobility. And uh, of course, there's a fistula, you can see there and a, and a pause. 
Anyway, she came and I gave her prayer medication of clindamycin, 300 milligram, metronidazole, and atoricoxib, 60 milligram to reduce the swelling. It was given to, uh, for three days and five days prior to surgery. And this is the case. Well, this, this is not too big, but the problem is heavily infected at that time. And when she came, it's still a little, a little bit swelling. And this is uh, when we measure the, um, the length for uh, incision. And we give a benzocaine 20% and we do anesthesia with articaine 4%. And this is, well, I do almost all the thing with laser because uh, I, I just want to show you what laser can do, okay? The flap incision is with MT4 tip and it's 12.5 watts, 75 hertz. And uh, you see, you can see, whereas the difference between blade and a laser tip is blade, you will get a uniform cut and with laser, is it's not so uniform and but you can see the result less bleeding that's what i love about laser because when it's less bleeding then you can see clear very clear about your surgical site and then the next we make an osseous axis we we create an axis to the root and then uh, using the Sorry, this is used to, uh, you have to be the MC3 tip. MC is a chisel tip, uh, you can see in the screen, and it's uh, uh, flat, it's not uh, cylindrical. MC6 is cylindrical. Sorry, this is uh, wrong, this is a typo. And um, after that, we use uh, MC6 tip for bone plasty or just to contour the sharp edge of the bone. And then you can see we leave the, 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 the cortical plate. And then you can see there's um, soft tissue, the granulation tissue there. And then that's the root. We do manual curettage and then measure it because we will remove around two millimeters one or two millimeters from the apex, from the edge of the apex. And now you can see that. How many blood can you see over there? Because you can see it clearly, very clear. Um, and then uh, really the laser, when you cut with laser, is at the same time coagulate your surgical area. And then usually it's better to create an access opening for the root canal treatment with the burr, but because this time I'm presenting a laser case, a, a case with laser, so I do everything with laser, but this will take a little bit longer than uh, conventional drill. So um, after that we do root canal treatment, I use only um, a K file or a C pilot from VDW. And then I use the M2 file, the 10 taper four. And then I only use three files usually. And then the next one is R25, a reciprocal file from a VDW also. You can see there. And then after that, we use a laser assisted irrigation using the Actually, I'm doing the procedure that used for the Airbium Yak. The, the laser that I use is Airbium Chromium YSGG. So I use the PIPS procedure and I also do an LAI. So I, I don't know why, because um, some journal says that the PIPS is more effective than an LAI. And the other journals said that LAI is more effective than the PIPS with the Airbnb Yak. And so um, it's really bit, a little bit confusing actually, but when you know the basic, the basic is about the contamination of the root canal. And it's 
terminating the bacteria and cleaning cleaning the smear layer and everything so so um, use your logic and you can you can use both actually so this is the rft file this is a radio firing tip this is a radio firing tip rft3 used to clean the root canal and then yeah maybe a lot of people ask why do you do it in just one visit altogether why don't you do a root canal treatment first and then treat the cyst later maybe in this case you can't but um in in a normal case usually cyst is not it's is a sterile it contains a sterile uh, liquid and you can treat it uh, by a root canal treatment and sometimes it works but you know um nowadays all of the patient wants two to the same day one stage surgery and you know they don't want to come a lot um, in multiple visits so so um i'm with with my thesis i i try to find a way from journals from uh, uh, the professor and all of the teacher that i have how to treat a post-infection socket with laser. And it turns out very good because especially with implants, I work a lot with implants. And this is also an infection socket. So I try to use the same parameters for the infection, infected case. And the result is magnificent. It's very good. So this is the, um, I do uh, a single cone alteration. And this is the, the, the research that I created in my thesis. So it's, uh, first we, we vaporize the granulation uh, tissue or soft tissue debridement using R55, 1.5 watt, 30 hertz, it's made like 50 millijoule, and then hard tissue debridement. So this is what I love. I, I always say, uh, while it always say to me that, come on, three watt, 30 hertz, only 100 millijoule, you cannot take the bone. You need at least 150. That's true. Because with 100 millijoule, it's kind of difficult to remove the bone. But I use the 100 millijoule is not to remove the bone, but to debride the bone, to clean the bone. And there's a, a, a nice uh, article from Ed Kusek about hydroacoustic effect on the um, when he tried to clean an infect, uh, infected socket after extraction and then place implant immediately. But at that time, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, he's using an MT4 tip. It's a pointed tip with a very low, low, um, uh, low power and well in this case I try like to do like um, you can say a lesser curry touch I do a manual curry touch for preparation of soft tissue uh, granulation tissue I mean so hard tissue debridement and then after that I decorticate the bone to increase the vascular uh, blood vascularization increase the blood flow it's it's like when a, you do a bone grafting for implant then you make a punch to the bone to increase um the blood there and then this is after the, the cleaning you can see this uh granulation tissue and you can see it's clean and less bleeding i mean you can see it clear and then after that i'm using the bio oils to to fill the 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 the, the space that created by the cyst and then i put the bio guide it's from guys Lich. and then i close it so you can see it's just a simple incision it's just uh, maybe less it's about eight millimeters or one centimeters um, incision and then I do the suture with polypropylene 5.0 monofilament. And then well, the result is maybe not that nice. It's about 
um, I guess it's about 10, no, no, it's 10 days, it's not two weeks, not even two weeks. This is four weeks, as you can see, it's very nice. And then uh, this is the x-ray after four weeks, and you can see that the augmentation is working very well at the moment at that time. And then after that, uh, I do the epithelialization uh, to, to increase, to, to make a tissue repairment, and the area is like that, the epithelialization. It's a 1.5 watts, 30 hertz. And then this is six month follow up, nothing changed from the intraoral view. And this is the x ray, it's quite nice. And this is 11 months because the COVID won't allow me to, to meet the patient, the patient won't come to get their 12 months follow up. And this is it is when you can see it is the, the bone works, but the bone augmentation work very well. I mean, for sure, <coughs> the if you add the bone graft or you do a GBR in an infected socket, if it's not clean, that it definitely will fail. You will see a pus, you can see your bone graft is uh, resorption over there, and you have to redo it again. But this is the first example with laser and what you can do. Well, you can, this is the parameter that I use in the surgery and mostly for the infection uh, area, the post-infection sockets for implants. And it's almost the same. Uh, you can screenshot this if you want. And then start to the case number two. This is a uh, inflicted, uh, in, uh, with two, one, one, and one, two, there's two teeth now. And uh, it's quite big. Yeah, it's, it's because of fracture. And she actually, she came because the, the t her tooth is, you know, moving. And it's, it's a, when she press it, it's like sounding and moving and scrapitis is definitely assist. And, and but the main, the first thing that she asked me was to fix her appearance with that. Actually, it's it's uh, she have a composite feeling for so many times with this, and I said to her, okay, we need to fix on the bigger issue than than uh, than only fracture two. So uh, we decide to do. Uh, Epicoectomy, we do it the same way as the first one. The same procedure, we measure it, and then laser incision, the same parameters. And then, oh, I think I have to speed up a little bit. And you, this is this, pardon? Uh, Iman, can you give us your uh, reflections and um, your summary of both these cases. So okay. it's good to have a take home well, message. Okay. When uh, my take home message is um, when you don't know things and you will be strange about the things and you will fear it. When you don't trust it, you definitely reject it. So, I mean, it's, it's not easy to learn about laser because laser is maybe expensive and you need also investment to learn about laser. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's laser changed perspective of my practice. So the take home message is um, you need, when you do wrong because you don't know how to work it, uh, with, with the right way. Maybe you can start with beard, right? I like that. Education is um, a must. Doctor, yeah, the, the more the more you study, I mean, the more you, um, the more I learn. I feel like I still don't know a lot of things. That's <laughs> wow, more limitations. 
<laughs> more limitation this <laughs> yeah. just to make it simple for our audience yes. if i want yeah. to ask you now i may maybe the, this question jump for everyone most of uh, the endodontists they do it in the conventional method so from your experience what's the main logic behind using laser uh, over the conventional method the main benefit Forget the paper, forget the research, forget the difference between this group and this group. For you and clean your clinical practice, what's the main thing you achieve? Well, with laser, I clean the root canal or disinfect the root canal better. I feel more confident. And uh, of course, everything that burns will die. And, and that's, uh, you, you know, protein denaturation is about 60 degrees Celsius. And uh, when you look, and another thing is when you, when you use laser, I mean, um, it's definitely promote faster healing, less swelling, and um, less pain. Maybe in some cases, using laser takes more time, but less visit. So, but... Uh, there's another main issue. If you use laser, then it will be very, very good for your marketing, for your business. It definitely raise the bar. Can you make the surgery again without laser? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Can you do the surgery without laser? No idea. Can, can I? You? Can yeah. I? Yes. But will I? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's like this. If, if you have a better car, um, will you use the less better Very difficult car? to go back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you thank you, Iman. Thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, so Iman. greetings from Indonesia. Thank you. Say hello to our friends. And it was really a pleasure to have